Hey guys, Enrique here from Maven, and I've got a brand new Excel question to answer from our Ask Maven series. Now, I was talking to my friend Ricardo the other day, and he showed me this great Excel report that he had built that was based on using dynamic array formulas. Now, he had it almost perfect, but the only thing that was missing, which is what he asked me, was to be able to sort a dynamic array based on the results of a calculation. Now, he had tried using unique and sort by, but that wasn't doing the trick. And that's because even though it may sound easy, there's actually quite a bit of steps involved here. We're going to use unique. We're going to use count ifs in this case, but it would work with any other formula based calculation. And we're also going to leverage the choose function and we're going to use let to make it all easier to write and to read. So that said, let's jump into Excel and I'll show you guys how we did. All right, here in Excel, we've got a table that contains Super Bowl commercials for the top 10 most advertised brands from the year 2000 all the way down to 2020. So we've got the year the commercial aired, the brand it's from, the YouTube link, the length in seconds, and the number of YouTube views and YouTube likes. And we've also got this other tab that has the information for the 2021 commercials that we're going to add on here later. So with this information, let's say that I wanted to calculate the number of commercials by brand and then sort that descending. So I have the brand with the most commercials first and its number of commercials and then down all the way to the brand with the least number of commercials. And I want this list to be dynamic so that when I add more data, it will automatically update and resort. So to do that, we need to use dynamic arrays formulas, as you may have guessed. But the problem is that it's actually not as easy to accomplish as you'd think. So let's start by just getting our unique name of the brands here. And to do that, we need to use our unique function. So this step is pretty straightforward. We want the unique brands. Select the brand column from our commercials table. Close that out. And we've got our 10 brands. And now what we need to do is calculate the number of commercials for each brand which essentially just means we need to count the number of times each brand appears in this column. So to do that, we can use count ifs. The criteria range is going to be our brand column and our criteria is going to be our brand name. Now we could just select the first one, close this out and apply down. But because this is a dynamic array formula, we can simply use the pound symbol it's going to select my entire spilled range from my unique function. Close this out, and now it will spill these results. And if we want to verify, we've got each right here. Let's do some quick filtering. And we've got 13 each trade commercials. So this is all working perfectly. The problem is that this isn't sorted. So we could try something like sorting the brands here but all that's going to do is sort these alphabetically and you'll notice the calculations updated and it's not in descending order by the number of commercials so we could try to do something like all right let's sort by and then we want to sort by this array here close that out press enter and you'll see that we have a circular reference. So bottom line, this formula didn't work as expected. So let's go back to what we had before. And the problem here is that we have two separate arrays that we're trying to treat as one to then sort it. So what we need to do is convert these two arrays, one of which is dependent on the other, into a single array. And to do that, we can use the choose function. So I won't go very deep into how choose works, but in essence, you will feed it an index number and it will then return a value in the position of that index number. But you need to provide these values for it. But what we could do is actually add an array constant here to telling it to return 
the first index number, so value 1, and then join that with the second value. So now all we need to do is provide these values. So the first one is going to be this array, and the second one is going to be this array. So the choose function is going to join 1 and 2, which are these two. Close that, press enter, and you'll see that we get the same results in a dynamic array. So what we could do now is just sort this function by the second column over, which is the number of commercials, and just sort descending. Let's close that, press enter, and now we have the correct order. Now the problem is that this is still reliant on these two arrays, so if I delete either one, everything is going to break. So I'm going to undo there, and what we're going to do is create a separate function that joins all of these steps together. So I'm going to give myself some space here, and what we're going to do is actually use the let function to make it a little bit clearer. And what let does is essentially lets you declare variables inside of an Excel function. So I'm going to press Alt Enter to do a line break here, and we'll start by declaring our brands. So our variable is going to be called brands, and what that's going to be equal to is just this list of unique brands, which as you know is unique. Commercial brands, close that, comma over to our next argument, press Alt Enter, and just to show you how this is working, the last argument in a let function is what you want to return. So if I just did that, close it out, we're just returning brands, with which is this unique function here. But let's declare a second variable here, which is going to be the number of ads. And that's going to be countifs. The criteria range is our brand here. And the criteria, remember last time we pointed to this dynamic array here, and this dynamic array within the context of this function is just our brands variable. Press comma, alt enter. Oops. Forgot to close my countifs function here. All right, so we've got our two independent arrays now within the let function. Now we need to join them using choose. So let's just call this array and we want it to be choose. We want to return one and two joined together. And the value for one is going to be our brands. The value for two is going to be our ads. So these two here. Close our choose function. Alt enter one more time and let's return this array. Press enter and there we go. So now all we need to do is sort this array. by the second column over in descending order, close that, press enter, and there we go. And the beauty of this is that now I can delete these, and this works perfectly fine independently. So it's going to be our brand, adds, let's add some formatting here. Oops. All right, so that's finished. Now, now let's just check that it's working dynamically as intended. So I'm going to copy this and paste the values here just to double check. Let's grab the data for 2021. Copy that. Let's paste it down here. You'll see that it was automatically added to our table, so our formula should be working. And now we've got 62 Bud Light commercials, 43 Budweiser. You'll see that Doritos now overtook Pepsi, and it was automatically moved to the third position. Hyundai, Coca-Cola, E-Trade, Kia, and Toyota overtook the NFL as well. And that's how we got that one to work. So the main thing to keep in mind here is that if you ever want to sort a dynamic array based on a calculation that's using that dynamic array, then it's best to use let, declare a variable for each one of the independent dynamic arrays that you're working with, use choose to join them, 
And then once you have that final array, you can sort it in any way you want. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And hit me up in the comments below with any questions or suggestions you might have on the video. But that's it for now, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.